If you've seen my previous video, you might have seen my plugin for Affinity Photo that can be used to invert film negative scans while doing automatic dust removal. What I will be showing you today is the evolution of my workflow that makes the process even more automated and easier. Let's start out by quickly demonstrating it. We'll be turning our raw scans into high quality, neutral and ready to edit raw images with just one click. We will also have access to quick and high quality dust or scratch removal that is better than the scanning software's automatic options. Here I've got a folder of scans I've done of a roll of film. If you want to know how to do this, check out my last video where I explain what settings you have to use. The too long didn't watch is that you want to scan them as raw TIFF files with the infrared scan option turned on. Let's open up our folder with the scans and select all of them. We can right click go to quick actions, and then we can see my shortcuts. You can select this version if your scanner isn't capable of infrared, or if you don't want any of the dust to be removed, but in this case I do, so I'm gonna select Sigmund's Darkroom shortcut IR. That stands for infrared. And then the shortcut goes to work. We can see the gear icon start spinning up here to indicate that it is processing the images. And we can see that the shortcut creates some temporary files. These all get deleted at the end. We can sit back and check back in once it's done. While it's loading, we can do whatever we want. We can even close the folder and do something else. Depending on how many files you are processing, this can take a little bit of time. You will know it's done when the gear icon has disappeared from your menu bar. I will fast forward to when the shortcut is finished. Now that the script is done processing, we can see that each scan has a matching image labeled inverted at the end. If we take a look, we can see that it is a great looking inverted version of the scan. It is a fairly flat image, which is by design, because these are intended to be a great neutral starting off point to start editing the images from. In combination with the editing, we can also infill the dust and scratches found by the script. To do this, let's open up the picture in our image editing program. The macro I provide is for Affinity Photo, because that is what I use, but later I will explain how it works so that you can make your own macro for Photoshop. Let's open up the image in Affinity Photo by right clicking, selecting Open With and selecting Affinity Photo. And we will have a category called Signance Darkroom Shortcut with a macro in it called Remove Dust. All we need to do is hit this macro. It will load a little bit and it will have removed all of the dust. Just like in my previous macro, you can compare the version with the dust removed to the version with the dust still present to make sure nothing has been falsely detected. If something is off, we can just erase that part of the top layer away. If we find a bit of dust that wasn't caught by the infrared scan, we can select the inpainting tool and remove it. Then we can go ahead, edit the image, and export it. Let's talk about some of the advantages of doing things this way. First of all, we have a raw scan of the film negative that we can archive so that there's always a backup we can start from scratch off of if we aren't happy with the image we have edited, or if we figure out an even better way of doing things in the future. Secondly, it's super easy to get all of the inverted images, so once we have done that, we can very easily take a look at all of the images and decide which ones we want to edit. Thirdly, in an improvement over the last version, we just need to open one image in our image editor each time even if we were using the infrared scan for dust removal. While with the last version, we needed to open two images as layers, which was kind of a hassle. Let me show you how to install the shortcut. Open up the first link in the description and that will open up the GitHub page for the shortcut. If we scroll down, we'll see a short explanation on what the shortcut does, and then we'll find the instructions on how to install all of the components of the shortcut. So you can follow along these instructions, but I'll also show you all the steps you have to do right here in this video, so that if you have any difficulties or don't quite understand something in the instructions, you'll be able to see how I do it. 
All right, for the first step, we have to install Image Magic, and the easiest way how to install this is using Brew. For this, you will have to use the terminal, but you only have to use these three commands, and then you can close the terminal, and it's not very complicated. I'll just show you the steps you have to do. So first of all, let's start off by opening the terminal. We can do that by pressing Command Space uh, to open Spotlight and typing in Terminal. Now that we have Terminal open, we can copy this first command just by pressing the Copy button and then just pasting it into the terminal. We don't have to do anything, we just have to enter. Now it's going to ask you for your password, so you just enter in your password for your account. If this is your first time properly using the terminal, it's also going to have to download the command line tools for Xcode from the Apple servers. And then it will ask you to hit return again. This step takes a while, so just be patient, wait for it to finish loading, and I'll fast forward to when it's done loading for me. All right, now it's done installing the command line tools for Xcode and it's asking us for our password again. So we'll just put it back in and hit enter. Now, after it's done installing all of the important components for Xcode, it will download and install Homebrew for us. This will also take a little bit of time to load. So I'll just fast forward through this part of the video again. All right, now Homebrew is finished installing. You probably also got this warning right here. I won't explain exactly what this means, but it's not anything bad. All we need to do is go to next steps and see that it tells us to run these two commands in our terminal. So we'll just select them both like this here. We'll copy them and paste them. All right, now we have Brew fully installed and configured. Now we can select the next, next two commands that I've got in the GitHub right here and copy the first one and run it. It will also take a little bit of time to load, but not as long as the previous command. Now we can copy the third command right here and paste it. This will take a little bit longer to install than the previous command, but not as long as the first one. There we go. Now we've finished installing all the things that we need to with the terminal and we can go ahead and close it. I'm going to right click on terminal and hit quit. Now we can download the release from my GitHub. Let's just click on the link. All right, now let's open it in our downloads folder. As we can see, we've got Sigmund's Darkroom shortcut right here. This is the version number. Let's open it and we can see all the contents. First of all, we want to install the two Apple workflows and these are the ones that end with dot workflow at the end. So let's first start by opening Signal start from shortcut infrared. We just double click on it and we'll get a pop up asking us if we want, want to install this quick action. So let's hit install. And we can see it gets added to our extensions. Let's do the same thing with the other workflow, hit install. And as we can see, they've both been added. We can close the system preferences. And as you can see, also both of the workflows have disappeared from the folder because they've both been installed. And we can also install the macro for Affinity Photo by double clicking it. This will open Affinity Photo. And we get a pop-up saying that we imported new library categories. Let's hit OK. And as you can see, we've got a new category under the default category. Let's close that. Called Signance Darkroom Shortcuts. And we've got a macro in here called Remove Dust. If this area isn't showing up for you, we can activate it by going to View Studio Macro and make sure that it's activated. All right, let's close Affinity Photo. And now we can install the scripts. Let's open up the folder right here called scripts. And we can see three scripts in here. We need to install these to a specific folder. Let's open a new finder window. And here, let's go to go, 
go to folder. Let's move this window over here so we can see the instructions and type in user slash local slash bin. USR slash local slash bin. We can see that it pops up right here. So let's hit enter to open it. And all we need to do is drag and drop these three scripts into this folder. They get copied into the folder and we can close both the finder windows. And now we're already done installing everything. We can test out the shortcut with the example tiff linked here. Let's download it and wait for it to finish downloading. As we can see, this is a raw scan. Let's close preview. And like in the demo, we can use the shortcut by selecting the TIFF file we want to invert, right clicking on it, going down to quick actions and then selecting which one of the shortcuts we want to use. I'm going to do the infrared version because this specific TIFF file was also scanned with infrared. So I'm just going to click on Signance Darkroom Shortcut IR. And here we can see that next to the example.tiff, we've got the example inverted TIFF. And we can check that out by opening it in preview and see that it's been inverted. I will now explain how the shortcut and the plugin work. The shortcut creates several temporary images, which get deleted at the end. But to demonstrate what each step does, I've got them listed right here. The shortcut first uses a script by Jazz99 on the image called negfix8 using the contrast stretch operator. This does most of the heavy lifting as far as the inversion goes. Then it uses two scripts by a user called Fred, who has made a ton of amazing image magic scripts. The scripts used are auto level and auto color, which smartly correct the brightness and the colors of the image. At this point, the image has been fully converted to the final color image. The shortcut now works with the infrared scan to detect any dust and scratches. We separate out the layer of the TIFF that contains the infrared scan and then normalize it, which stretches the values of the image to each extreme, making everything that is dust or scratches completely black. We still have a lot of the image coming through, which we need to remove. We will do this using the red channel of the regular scan. Like I explained in my last video, we're doing this because the infrared scan isn't pure infrared and we're getting some bleed through from the visible spectrum of light, specifically the red part of the spectrum. We will separate out the red channel and also normalize it so that it gets stretched similarly to the infrared image. We can then divide the images from each other, which results in only the differences in the images remaining, which are mainly the dust and scratches. Now we can insert this image containing the dust and scratches into the inverted image. We can store this information in the alpha channel of the image since it is not being used. At this point, the script then deletes all the temporary files and we're left with the final image, which we can easily import into our local editor for dust removal and final touches. When we use the plugin in Affinity Photo, it then extracts the dust and scratches image we produced from the alpha channel and sends it to a layer, selects the areas that are black, then shrinks the selection by one pixel to remove any stray pixels. Then it grows the selection by four pixels so that the dust and scratches are fully encompassed in the selection. And then it inpaints these areas of the image. It does this on a duplicate layer so you can compare the before and after. And that's how the shortcut and the plugin work. So what do I want to still improve on in the future? One area I've been looking into is doing inpainting as part of the shortcut so that this doesn't have to be done in an image editor. So far, I haven't been able to find an inpainting algorithm that can be used in a script that gives as good results as Affinity Photo is able to. The most promising one I've found is the patched base inpainting in GMIC, but these results have been very inconsistent. Aside from not being able to find great results, I find it valuable to be able to inspect the dust removal easily and manually correct it quickly, which is currently the case in this shortcut. And if the inpainting was already done in the output image, it would not be as easy to fix any errors. I will see if I can come up with a different solution, and if you have any ideas for this, please leave a comment or a suggestion on the GitHub. If you have any other feature requests or ideas, feel free to leave those on there as well. If you still want to use the Affinity plugin, you still can. It has just been renamed to Signance Darkroom plugin, and you can follow the guide on how to use it in my last video. I hope this video did a good job in showing you how to install everything, 
and has made the process of film negative inversion even easier for you. If it has, like this video. If you want to stay up to date on future iterations, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.